Well, dentists are all right. The only thing is, Jesus, you go down and have a tooth pulled, they want seven and a half, eight dollars. Just pull one tooth. And all it is is just bang them. One snap and a tooth comes out. And I tried it once, twice, and I found out, hell, you can snap them right out. There's nothing to it. Just hook right on them and give them a good big pull. Yeah, you just take a wire. I take a little piece of copper wire. But sometimes you get a tooth so close together you can't pry it apart, you know. You might have to use a string. But you take a piece of copper wire, and you get it right around the tooth, right there, and get a good slip knot on it. Put it on, and then put your head up against something like that. Take a little hold of it just like that, and bam! Just give it to him. Snap it right out. I mean, oh, just like that. Just quicker than what a dentist would do it, because they grab it, and they twist, and they pull, and... You know, they they just don't put the power on it. You put it right to it and you snap them right out and it's all over with. That's the end of it right there. Tooth's gone. So oh, hell, you might as well pull them yourself. What you can, I mean, I've tried them low ones. I can't pull them because you got to come up on them. But I don't know what a man could hook a wire on them, jump, hook it to a limb, climb up in a tree and jump out of a tree. If the weight of my body would take the tooth out, bango, she'd be gone. <laughs> married one time. Well, Waldo was married twice. He had his first wife, had two boys by her. And then I think he had four by his second wife, by Lola. And I was married 29 years and 10 days. Had 10 kids. Well, it's only about the middle of October, but we got a lot of lot to do. Waldo downriver there working on the snow travelers. I'm trying to get the camps in shape here, getting the roof tight for winter. Battening them up here a little bit, so we'll be all ready when the snow hits us. We won't have to bother with that stuff, then we can get out and get on the trap line, and get some traps out. Well, I suppose it's healthy in a way, but I've worked all my life and I'm beginning to think I didn't get nowhere by doing it, so what's the sense? <laughs> Might as well go out and play a little bit. It's time to go look around the country, see what's floating around. Yeah, we got a few friends out here. We got to get out and do a little visiting and get that over with before the winter comes on. We got to get out and see Raleigh and Charlie in the shingle mill there, and then we got to kill that damned hog. Get that stuff all out the way, and then probably we come back in the woods, settle down for the winter. Down Greenwich, you know. Oh. Hey, that rat race like drove me foolish. Oh, man can't be happy in a hubbub like down Greenwich. 
Oh, I hated myself every minute I was there. You can't even be contented. No. Too many people in one little place. Yeah. You can't oh, even I... kick them out of your way, hardly, you know. <laughs> I don't know how people live in that rabbit. You know, just to live right there all the time. I just don't know how in the hell they live. back road to have beer, you know. And we tried that one night, didn't we, Walter? The night you come down. Yeah, Walter come down, you know, and he hunted me up, found me, he had his car. Well, Walter said, come on, I want you to show me the town, go up, show me the job. And I said, okay. Well, Walter said, you drive, you've been here longer than I have, you probably know more where to go. So I took the car and we jumped in and off we went. And I took him up, showed him the job, and we stopped and picked up a couple of six-packs. And Walter said, yeah, find a, get out on a back road somewhere and we'll have a beer. We tried roads over. We went clean through Stamford, didn't we? That's right. Clean through Stamford, and we right. swung on every... Couldn't find one. Finally, we wound up right on US 1 and said, this is just a good place any, I guess. We opened them up and went to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fall we quit the job and left it and came home, went trapping. Just like everybody else one time, just I, he just got plain sick of it and I did, of the way people do things, that's all. So we think everybody's crazy want all this stuff, you know, and they can live simple. Just as simple as I live that way. That, that's why I say I got a right to say it. Because I had ten kids, lived in a big house. Well, I lived in a house that had eleven rooms in it. Had two and a half stories. Had all them kids there, electric stove, bus toilet. Bathroom, the whole work. But when the bathroom switched up, uh, well, it had no fashion shit out there, which it had years ago, and it was still there. That always was. A person can enjoy very little all for themselves. Most, most enjoyment comes with and through other people. You know, if a man was to be sentenced to live the rest of his life, we'll say on an island or somewhere, totally isolated from all people for the rest of his life, and to think of it, yet he's going to live at everything he wanted, uh, he would be just about as well off to be dead. Is, uh, is full and satisfying is a good family life. A man's got a lot of things take up his mind. That is when life can be enjoyed to the fullest extent with a family.
Even the animals are that way. Animals get together in families unless you find one of these old loners. And they generally have lost their family and thought of an outcast. You might cross the class Bob and I as outcast now. Yeah, sitting around that old camp for many nights there all alone, nobody there but it's one once in a while I'd hear a noise and I'd listen and in come Walter, he'd blow in, he'd come in, we'd sit there and shoot the breeze. And just like old times again, but it only lasted a short time. First thing you know, he'd gone back to his camp, and I was alone again, so was he. But go on two, three days, first thing you know, another night I'd either be up to his camp or he'd come down, we'd have two more beers together. Somebody happened to come in, bring some, up. we'd get out to town once in a while. So, kind of nice, have company around once in a while, shoot the breeze with, keep them talking to yourself anyway. back in the woods like that. It's nice to be alone. I enjoy it at times, but same if you hit a lot of stormy weather and you're holed up in camp, bad weather, real cold out one thing or another, why, kind of nice to have somebody drop around, get over that cabin fever business, talk old times over and stuff. Especially with somebody like Waldo, where we've buddied around so long, done so many things together. Some of these old beaver, and they're old beaver that have been trapped. And, well, the one up to by Iron Pond there had been caught in a trap and lost the front foot. You might as well get them out because they're, usually they're getting a little age on them. They're going to die someday, same as anybody else. Well, these beaver up through there, they've been trapped for the last 10, 12 years. And, and Walter's, uh, he's smartened up a lot of them. Him, Namie LaCour, and Raleigh, and one or two others that's been in here over the years once in a while. And, they just get smart, that's all. If you take these old beaver like that, they're usually old ones that get cagey like that, they ain't the young ones, and they're on their way out anyway. They're gonna die, uh, there's no question about it, and the day is pretty short. It just seems mean, everybody else, I mean, that's something you can't get away from. The death and taxes, <laughs> animals and all, they get away from the taxes, but they don't get away from death.
All grown up now. I sold it when my second wife divorced me and got rid of it. Place it all grown to bushes. I'd have kept that place if the turnpike hadn't gone through. You used to go out there and sit on the steps nights, you know, years ago. Listen to night noises, owls be hooting around, foxes were yapping, coons squalling. And uh, after the turnpike went through, I used to go out and sit on the west steps there. All I could hear was this turnpike. I went slamming the door, disgusted. So we got rid of the place. They went through, a fellow down here, Clarence Berry's property, went right down through the middle of his big field. Now, he was making his living on his farm. It worked him up so he finally hung himself. Found him hanging off a beam one morning. the poor animals, it ain't good to kill them, but they've got to be kept thinned down. Definitely, uh, as a man gets older, he doesn't enjoy killing, because he knows his days are running out, and he's, he isn't going to live very long, and he gets thinking about getting all done, dying. I don't think anybody actually enjoys killing. I really would like to get back into wilderness, in the real wilderness, once, just once before I get too old. Well, you've got about two, three hundred miles to your nearest neighbor. That would really be a challenge. Oh, you'd have to go into, uh, into Yukon or northern Canada or in Alaska, Northwest Territory. You, you, you still can find a lot of wilderness up there. Oh, yes, this looks wild, but it is wild. It was wild the other day when that wind was blowing and snow was swirling around here in about 10 or 15 below zero. He was wild enough then. But he really liked the trapper. They think they're a heartless, barbarous bunch of savages. Trappers are not well liked, there's no question about it. I don't know. Some guys trap for the enjoy it, and I guess most everybody now just traps because they enjoy it. Prices of fur isn't enough to, to really make a career of it, but... Nice to get in the outdoors, match your wits with the elements. These animals, you match your wits with them, too. These animals all know how to take care of themselves. Here you go, B. Come get it. Come on. Come on. Here comes one. Come on, come get it. Come on. Come on, little fella. Come on, come get it. Here, Gobi. Come get it. Come on. Here, come get it. Come on. Come on, come get it. Aren't you hungry? That's the city cat there. Come on. Here, Gobi. That's one of them. Here, come on, come get it. Here. Oh. Uh. Come on, don't eat that down there. Come up and get that out of my hand. Come on, here. Here you go, B. Camp well, Robbins, Canadian you Jays, Gobies. Huh? Come on. Uh, all the same yeah. bird. Come, hurry up. Come get they disappear yeah. in the summer, they go farther north. Come they come back early in the fall. They're, they're here in come October. On. They, uh, no, uh, the company. You go out here and you build a campfire most anywhere, and boy, in a minute you've got a goby bird around. <laughs> the old legend is, if you believe in reincarnation, that there's some, the soul of some old woodsman come into these birds come and they on. come back. Hey. Uh, there are some that really believe that, too. I've heard a lot of these old timers. It's kind of a superstition with them. How many people are in these backwoods that, that did believe that? Of course, I don't know now, but here back in the, in the 30s, come by God, there was a pile of them. Oh, I like it. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. All is peaceful in here. You know, nobody bothers you. You got to worry about too much. Well, same as living here. A man wants to stay right here year-round, wouldn't take much. But the minute you get out and try to run a car, something like that, well, you just look at the price of gas and oil and repairs and tires, you know. Well, when you get out and start using them things, well, it costs you money.
Come here. Come here. Turn the whole works right back. About a hundred years. Yeah. Throw the cars right off. Shut the factories all down and put them back out on little farms again. <laughs> Let them live. You know, if, of course, the, the people today, they wouldn't enjoy that. But if they were brought up to it, Jesus, I mean, uh, you take all my folks. Uh, my father, my grandfather and them. You know, they get up in the morning, they worked around to, on their own farm and... They didn't have no worries, no uh -huh. hubbubs, you know. Hell, today, I mean, Jesus, you, well, you get up in the morning fighting yourself. Jesus, I gotta hurry up, I'm gonna be late for work. I mean, uh, everything's a rush. I'll get rid of Pick that one up for me. And they gotta get to work, because I got a payment coming due on this, or a payment coming due on that. Uh. Hell, them fellas, they never had them problems, get. you know. Oh. Yeah, we gotta have a little more of that. Somewhere. Gee! 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 Whoa! He and I worked together for a good many years in the woods there. And you get used to one another and you just sense it. There's something you sense, you know, you know it. You know? He grabs and I grab and you just know what he's going to do. You just automatically do it without even thinking, you know. And of course, Walt and I, we worked together for a good many years up there in the woods. I drove cattle ever since I've been picking up whole box board in my hand. And of course, my grandfather always had them, and uh, any place I was around, I mean, it's just something that you just normally done. I mean, you learn to do it just like a kid learn to talk. How's that, Granny? When I work with a team, you know, you, you don't hate yourself. <laughs> you enjoy yourself, you know. Yeah. And then again, of course, me staying in a camp all alone, I had company. I got these cattle go out to talk to, you know. <laughs> That way, man, don't get talking to himself. Come on, Red. Well, get the other one, Brownie. Right. 
you're doing this, huh? Not yet. With me, I've stuck with teams, you know, in the woods there. A lot of them laugh, but when it come the end of the week, what money I had was mine. I put it in my pocket. I didn't have to go pay some bank or finance company. They picked that old NASA there that married Jackie Kennedy. Look at the money he's got. Are you going to buy her a diamond mine? You know, just for the fat of it, you know. Well, that's all right. That's all well and good, but I mean, uh, there's no need of any one man having that much money. What the hell does he need all that money for? He could give 90% of it away and still have enough. See? To have anything he wants in the world. Why well, bunch of money? Of course, I'll admit it. He had to be smart, but he... There's no man ever made that much money and made it honestly. It's impossible. It can't be done. He stole that from somebody through hook or crook or some way. Because no man ever worked in his life and made that much money. He either had it left to him, which is not dishonest, but whoever left him that much, he was dishonest. He's hurt somebody, he stepped on a good many little fellas' toes and beat them, and didn't use them fair and right in order to get a hold of that much money. It just can't be done. If you don't think so, go out and try it. I would be all in favor of passing a law and saying, hey, look, it ain't right for you to have that much money. You don't need it. They take it away and just ride down the road here. You'll find some poor guy struggling his head off. He ain't got nothing with a whole bunch of kids and throw him a thousand dollars and go down the road and throw this other guy a thousand. Well, he'll probably throw it away, but he'll have a good time while it's going. It'll be something he never had before anyway. He'll be able to go out and splurge a little bit, you know. Now, I don't know how much that old ass is worth, but he's worth plenty. I don't give a damn. When the time comes and the old boy comes down, taps him on the shoulder and said, hey, you're going to come with me, I don't care how much money he's got. He's going to go right along just the same as I'm going to. And his money ain't going to do him a damn bit of good. And it ain't. It ain't going to do him a mite of good. So, where's he going to be any better than I am when it comes right down to the end of it? They're going to put him right in the ground and he'll rot just fast I will. Cut a little right on the front here. Well, watch out, that I've had jobs that I didn't like, but I've never worked on too many jobs that I didn't. Now, I tried working in the mills, you know, two, three different times. Yeah. And, uh, hell, I never stayed any length of time I got out. And everybody would say, well, what the hell do you want to work in the woods for? I said, look. Come on. There's one thing about it, when I head for the woods in the morning, I can go in there and I enjoy myself all day. I don't hate myself for nothing, but I said when I go in one of them mills, I hate myself before I go in and all the time I'm in there and I can't wait till I can get out. I said, what a man's got to work like that? Hell, life too short for that. What are you? Come here. Never dreaded going into the woods. No and and uh, hell, the only trouble was with me, is, especially in the wintertime, Christ, first thing you know, the day was gone. I mean, time goes fast on a job like that. Hell, you're going one of them mills, and Jesus, eight hours is like 20. You know, time drags. Hell, in the woods, Christ, you go in, and first thing you know, Christ, time to go home. You wish you had another hour or two. Come here, Willie. Hey. Come up here. Come up here. Come here. Come here, Will. It's cheaper for, it's just for a man to be married, you know, unless he has a great big family like I did, but I mean, if he only has one or two kids, hell, it's cheaper than it is to have a whole bunch of women. You don't cost money running around with these women. Jesus Christ, you run and chase, you know, and get them, and you, Christ, you spend money on you, well, just your gas money, run and go and see the darn things, you know. It runs in at a dollar. Less man find one of these women that uh, they pay the bills. I never hit too many of them. Jesus Christ, it's just like anything. It's just like buying a car. You can pay too much money for a car, you know. You make any odds what you buy, you can pay too much for a gun. I mean, uh, 
the price it costs just to run in the drinks you buy and what it costs you to take them out. Some of these women, hell, they ain't with it. They with it. You know, we had an old shack up there in the woods. We was working up there in the Cornish lot then. And I used to go down and see this old girl once in a while. Old, and hell, she was young. I call her old girl, but hell, she was younger than, I guess she was seven, eight years younger than we were. But Walter says, God damn, you go off here every two, three nights. He says, you're gone. And he says, Christ, how about taking me to get a little? I said, well, all right, Christ, I'll fix you up for one tonight. And Walter says, and I, and I told him who he knew of, but of course he'd never been out with her. And uh, Walter says, well, you guys, she never go for that with the both of us. I said, oh, yeah, I'll rig it up. Don't worry about it. He bet me a case of beer I couldn't. I did we went down, Quinn, with Cassett, pick her up. I, up on an old wood road there, she was going to meet us leave her car. We took Walter. The, Walter had that old panel in with a bed in it, you know. And Jesus, we kept her out all night. We gave her quite a time. Yeah. The only thing was, I won my case of beer, and Walter sat there and helped me drink it. Oh, well, we worked giving wood, cut wood, yarded wood with horses, yarded wood with cattle, Old cattle's affairs. Right, of course, we've gone out in the woods camping and canoeing and stuff. I mean, we've done a lot of that together. Fishing. Just go on vacations together. You know, take off and go. Drank a lot of old cider together. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Walt's all right. He has his moods, but, well, I, I get along with him. I have put up with a little of his shit. Maybe he does not mind sometimes. Who knows, you know? Can't really tell. We have our ups and downs and our ins and outs. Rounds and rounds, but we always wind up back together again. Never seems to fail. I'm always looking for a girl, but I ain't found one that wants to live the way I want to live. Uh, if I could find a woman like to live out in the woods and like the woods life, I'd just wish she'd show herself up. But then she'd got to prove herself. I mean, I wouldn't take a word for it. I mean, she, she'd have to live with me for a while, but she'd have to live an awful rough life. <laughs> she ain't going to have a spring bed under her every night, I'll tell her that. So, but... If there's any round like that, I'd be tickled to death to have one. But they got to live my way. I had a dream the other night about these beaver. You know, it seemed like I walked right up in the middle of the night. It was a nightmare. Here I had two of these great big beaver I'd caught out of a floage and one little kitten. There was two or three more in the floage and they looked at me and they were all pointing at me. He's the one. He's the one that caught our mom and daddy and our little brother. He's the one. 
And oh, that made me feel so bad. I walk out and boy, I set out not trap any more beaver. <laughs> This beaver trapping, well, to some people, it's a lot of fun. It is to me, but uh, there's more work to it than people realize. When you start chiseling through 30 inches of ice a lot of times, and your hands are in the water, cold, ice-cold water, your hands are always cold, you have to build a fire sometimes and quit working and go back and warm your hands and then come back and work again. And uh, There's more work to it than meets the eye. Things are done in the land of the midnight sun by men who mold for gold. The Arctic trails with the secret tales that make your blood run cold. And the northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge at Lake Labarge when I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and grows. And why he left his home in that sunny south to roam around the poles, God only knows. He was always cold, though that land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. Though he'd often say in his homely way, he'd sooner live in hell. It was on a Christmas day, and we were mushing our way over that Darson trail. And talking or cold, through a parka's fold, is stabbed like a driven nail. And if our eyes we'd close, then our lashes they froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight on our robes beneath the snow, the dogs were fed and the stars o'erhead were dancing heel and toe. And Sam turned to me and Cap says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I ask that you won't refuse my last request. He seemed so low, I couldn't say no. Then he says with a sort of a moan, "'Tis this cursed cold, and it's got right hope till I'm chilled and true to the bone. Yet it ain't being dead, tis the awful dread of that icy grave that pains. And I want you to swear that somehow foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains." was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I wouldn't give in. And I'd often sing to that hateful thing, and it seemed to hocken with a grin. Until one day, I came to the marge of Lake Labarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, and I saw in a thrice it was called the Alice May. I looked at it, then I thought a bit, then I looked at my frozen chum. 
Then there, says I, with these sudden cries, my cremator room. Some plank I tore from that cabin floor, and I lit that boiler fire. Some coal I found a lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. Oh, the flame just soared, and the furnace roared. Such a blaze you seldom see. Then I burred a hole in that glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, because I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. Oh, the heavens scowled, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. And that greasy smoke in a inky cloak went streaking down the sky. How long I wrestled in the snow with grisly fear, I do not know. But the stars come out and danced about ere I again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll take a peek inside. I think he's cooked, and it's time I looked, and the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, cool and calm, the heat of the furnace roar. He wore a smile you could see a mile, and he says, please close that door. It's nice in here, but I very much fear you'll let in the storm and the cold. It's the first time I've been warm since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee. Strange things are done in the land of the midnight sun by men who mold for gold. The Arctic trails are the secret tales that make your blood run cold. In the northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge at Lake Labarge when I cremated Sam McGee. I'll get that chisel, I guess. I'll bring it down to you in a second. All right. Oh, I don't think I'd bring it down to you. I guess that one's Jesus. She made an awful bubble when I hit through her. That's a good double one. side. That's blanket. That's blanket. Yeah, that's yep. a good one. Good that's one. A big one. A lot of skin. Want to take him out of that trap before it freezes? No, I'll leave the trap right on him. I'll take him out of the can. Let me knock the ladder off. Season's all done. Don't worry about him. That, 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 that's a good beaver there. Good, good blanket. Nice. Well, you got that other one go extra large, Walter. I would think so. It's a... Well, you may have some in your bait set. I am. Don't know, a bit might stretch into a super water. That's well, a big beaver. They look bigger after they dry out anyway. Yeah. Yeah, look. Look how beaverish that water looks down in there. It's a good hole. It's a good hole. Yeah, we riled it up a little now. That's a good forage. Well, let me go down and check the bait set. Pull them out. There ain't no ice water. No, there ain't none. It's right. That's one thing about these beaver. I don't think anybody knows how they, actually how they fuck. But I, I've always figured that the female laid on her back, the same as human beings, and the, the other beaver got right, the male beaver got right onto them. It's, it's debatable. Some think they do it the other way, but the way they're built, I can't see how they do. They got to get that big flat tail out of the way there somewhere. <laughs> I would think they've done it in the houses. Uh, this uh, business in the water, I don't think be half so good as it would be in a house and a good dry bed. Don't fall in the hole, Walter. That's deep. Now! Hi, Dory, that's one. What a, that's a big one, too. Yeah. Good big, big blanket. One. A big one. Dry him off in snow a little bit. Yeah, roll him around. Dry him off while he's... Cold I'll get it for you. I got it. Roll him around. Dry him out. Ah. 
You know, he just just took hold of that bait in one place, went to bite it. Took his foot in the trap. Yes, sir. But there was one sprung on the other side. You probably sprung that while yeah, he was he in it. Yeah, he sprung it. it. around. It's good beaver. Good beaver. Yeah, that big tail on that fellow, Walter. That's good blanket. Look at what you got on it. Ain't anything. Nothing. Nothing. Well, can't win them all. Can't win them all. Watch it. Well, yeah. Well, that's the end of it, Walter. The last trap of the season. Well, I know there's a chance that they'll stop taking bait, but I didn't think there was much of All that work catching them, then you got to do all that work skin them. Oh, hell, if I could find a woman come in here, as long as I had enough goddamn grub, I'd never go out. Man couldn't ask for anything more. Guys, he'd have a world right by the ass. But you take these women, they plaster the goddamn perfume in the deodorants to them and shit. They don't even smell like a woman. Twice years ago, they never shaved their hair off under their arms and stuff. Today, they shave it off, scat death, Jesus Christ, with a bubble of sweat coming around them, they wipe it off and spray some shit on it, you know? There she comes. Right. Now for the casters. That right there is what they make their perfume out of. Them are beaver casters. That's what they use to make this perfume for these women. And probably most of them, if they knew where they come from, what they wore, they probably wouldn't even wear the perfume, which might be a good thing. These ladies primp themselves all up and get themselves smelling like anything but a woman. Pay good money to do it. I'm surprised they don't shave it off that goddamn pussy. Hell, I fucked women with the sweat was running right off them. Jesus Christ, and your old bellies with a slop in the going it, and that's when it's good. Everything's right. What the hell? I mean, Christ, that's the way it's supposed to be. She <laughs> oh, goddamn. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm sure she might want to take a bath. She go out here and take a bath in the brook. She don't need a whole bunch of these smelling salts they put in the water and all that. Happy hot shit, you know? I mean, uh, that don't make a woman. In fact, it ruins one. If you want something, you come down and get it out of the can. Never mind you fighting around here. Chup, chup. Well, come on, little piss pot. There you are. There. There. Come on, you little piss pot, you. I know you're hungry. You're up there squawking away about it. I think you're one of the tame ones. Yeah, come on, you can have that if you want to come up and get it. Yeah, come on, you too. Come over here. Hell's the matter with you? Here, right here. Come right up here and get it. I ain't gonna bite you. Come on. They're getting bugs out of that sawdust now. Yeah. They ain't quite so interested in grub. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> she got a big hunk off the ground. She said, the heck with you. It's an unwritten law, a code in the woods, you know, and, uh, which uh, there's nothing on black and white about it, but you never leave a man's camp unless you leave him enough wood to build a fire, keep him going for a little while. You never break into a man's camp, but if you're stuck out, 
you will go into it, but you'll leave it the way, the way it was. You'll leave a note telling him why you was in there, you know, to keep him freezing to death, something like that. You never steal from a man in the woods. If you find a man in trouble, why, uh, you help him out, you get him out and get him going the best you can, and if he stuck a $100 bill in your face, you never take it. <laughs> this is the earliest I ever see it break in this country. The water's running everywhere, and it ain't gonna be long before the streams are gonna be over flooded. The water's gonna be going everywhere. Just frog. Oh, they just peep, 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 peep. You know, <laughs> it's hard work to imitate them. I mean, because uh, they, well, what they'll do, you get a whole bunch of them going and they just fall right into a chorus. But I know if you're walking by a pond and a whole bunch of them are peeping to beat hell, you know, the minute they hear you, they'll shut right up for a minute. You won't hear nothing. And then all of a sudden they'll start in again. Yeah, but I like to hear the peepers in the spring. They're, uh, well, you know spring's here when they're out. Ty up there working in the woods there. He's just like me. He's the only boy out of, the, out of what boys I had, but he's just, well, like father, like son, you know. You watch him with the team and he's good. In fact, he's got better than the old man. They give you a wild feeling. You just want to take right off, fly right along with them if you can fly. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they just make you wild and hawk, you know. You, you just forget all about civilization. You'd like to just take right off, head right for. Well, I always wanted to go right up into northern Canada, right where them buggers go. There's some country up there, I know there is somewhere. You no, know, there's something about it, you just let a flock of them fly over. And you just forget everything you're doing and stand right there, you know. And they do. There's something they do. There's something about a bunch of geese honking, boy, that it just sets your blood all the tingling, you know. Makes you want to take right off of it. Now, I know what it is. It's a free disc, boy. They got it. They go north. They go south. They go where they want to go, you know. 
There's something wild about them. There is nothing wasted in the plan of nature. Nothing. You take the forest here. These big trees grow up and fall down and die. They make plant food for smaller trees, and they grow up. It's a, a struggle for survival. You will see you go in where the trees are so thick. Well, the weaker ones die out and die out. And by and by, you've got a few big trees, which you've lived off the little trees, shaded them, crowded them out. The strong survive and the weak die is the plan of nature. Now, man has upset the balance why they keep the weak alive. And the, the weak reproduce, which gives weaker species. And I think that's one of our, our problems. In other words, uh, a man copy after the animals a lot, and he would learn things. The only thing that will save the country is to get back to nature, and that's all that can can save the people. the mind that created the universe. This whole universe goes round and round and round, year after year. Everything is fixed in its orbit and goes round and round. There's no beginning and no end. We can't conceive it, but then our puny little brains can't conceive much anyway. It's uncanny when a man gets thinking of, uh, of such things as that. That is one thing a man has no control over. Life. Here today and gone tomorrow. I might drop dead before I get to the road, nobody knows. Now, I don't want no fancy casket. Cheapest one they got, that's good enough. In fact, if they just rolled you up in a piece of burlap, you'd be just well off. It don't make no difference. You're just going to rot anyway, and that's going to be the end of it. But they put you in a cement vault. Christ, you can't replenish the ground that way. You stay in that vault, and that's it. You ain't done nobody any good. It's not good for man to live alone. You don't notice it. It, it has uh, goes so slowly on you. The longer you live alone, the worse you get, too. You know, I more or less pity an old bachelor that's lived through life, never had a chick nor a child. When they get old, there's nobody cares whether they live or die. It's kind of pathetic, and it's uh, a kind of a sad story. Come on, Bobby. Come on. Good, ain't it, huh? Oh, ain't that nice, huh? Oh, he said, boy, that is some good. Yeah. That is some good. Yeah. Boy, oh, boy, he said, I'd put that right to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs>